Atreus Lecox, sorry for the mispronunciation, asks, Did you watch In Defense of Online Predators by Nil, Nis? Are you aware of the AI deepfake Putin movie, favorite and least favorite Pokemon rival music, and did you hear what Toru Fuyura... Furuya? The voice of Yamcha and Tuxedo Mask did. I'm pretty sure I butchered that. So, let's go down the list. I haven't seen the video largely because of the fact that Nis clearly made the video to be rage bait, and I'm not going to give them a fucking click or ad. The most they're getting, and even then it's coming with an asterisk, is a mention in this video. And even then, their attention is basically just saying they're pathetic. As for the Putin movie, no, I haven't seen it. Least favorite and favorite rival music. Favorite's probably going to be Penny's theme. Least favorite is probably Gen 7 or House theme because I don't even remember his fucking music all that well. As for Toru Furuya, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, I'm aware and fuck this person. Holy shit, fuck this person. Just absolutely disgusting. Master Wolf Ganjik asks, Have you heard the news about the Hunt for Gollum movie and also Warner Brothers copywriting the fan film from 2009? Did you hear that James Somerton faked to offline himself? And why do people like Akumu defend Rosa Ray Ramsey from what she's done on Star Giant's server? I've heard of the Hunt for Gollum movie, and I've also heard about the copyright claim bullshit. Um, so, first portion, it exists. I don't have much else in terms of thoughts of it. As for Warner Brothers copyright claiming it, it was fucking stupid. As for the James Somerton thing, I believe there's a kernel of truth in that he is thinking of taking his own life. Part of the reason I say this is based on past experience, not only with his previous apology video mentioning something similar to this, but also because the last time we underestimated slash didn't take someone's, you know, suicidal tendency seriously, we got what happened with Etika. He has thought about this twice. Or rather, he has planned this twice. The fact he was even considering this twice tells me that there is a monochrome of truth to it. And I think he does need to talk to somebody about this. Because when faced with this kind of situation, why is his first option taking his own life? Something is up with him, and he needs to talk to somebody. Your life is precious. Don't waste it. And that is why I think James needs to talk to somebody... Because if his first option when facing these kinds of situations is to factory reset, I think there's something deeper that's going on with him. I think that he does need to talk to somebody about this. A medical professional, a mental professional, what have you. Because throwing your life away like this is not a solution. It's never the solution. As for your third question, it's hard for me to say, largely just because... Maybe he does it because he hates Lyo. Maybe he does it because it's the opposite of the popular opinion. I don't know, Kumo is just a fucking mess to talk about, and I'm just not getting into it. The whole situation with him and Lyo is just a goddamn mess, and that's why I don't talk about it too much on the channel, because even I don't know where the fuck is going, and it's too messy of me to talk about. But sure, man, let's just harass the autistic disabled woman for things that Rebecca and Nekopan did, and then completely fuck up reporting this story so that everyone feels sympathy to the cyber stalker. Ass, 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 ass. Robin Crusoe Jr. T asks, Least favorite thing about the Undertale game? Probably the genocide route. It's just a fucking slog, and it wasn't fun at all. Angry Cowboy asks, Did you see the lost version of Food Fight on YouTube, and are you aware that Penguin Zero is going to sue U.S. immigration? I've seen bits of it, and, uh, it's fucking weird, I'll say that much. And as for Penguin, yep. I saw it, and holy shit, the immigration system is fucking weird. Just goddamn. Captain Smart Eye Pants asks, Have you noticed that Illuminati has abandoned her channel? Do you think the Pooiverse is a really stupid idea? And are you aware that the Amazing Lucas is going to make a video game? I have noticed that Illuminati has abandoned her channel. That, and also because there's a whole bunch of videos talking about it. <laughs> so I would have found out anyways. But, um, yep, I kind of noticed that. Maybe it's because of the lawsuit, maybe it's because she's taking a break. But I've noticed it. As for the Pooverse, yeah, it is kind of stupid. But then again, they're trying to make everything into a fucking cinematic universe. Watch as Asuka Grimm gets a fucking cinematic- No, I'm not actually doing that. <laughs> fucking Avengers level thread, quick, throw the Q&A at it! <laughs> Anyways, as for the Amazing Lucas, I'm aware of it, and uh, hopefully it turns out to be at least a fun mess. Unlike that Alex Jones game. 
kind of surprised Disney hasn't taken action yet against the Kickstarter banner because I'm pretty sure that's their fucking property of Spider-Man. Spider-Man! Darth Deathkiller asks, have you seen the Critical Drinkers movie Rogue Elements? Have you seen Master Uguay's apology video? Are you aware that Nick Rokita was arrested with his wife and their nanny and also defending the movie Cuties? Did you see Daily Wire's Mr. Burcham cartoon, and did you see the Garfield movie? Haven't seen Rogue Elements. It looks like shit, so that's probably why I haven't seen it. Volcano Dory! Master Uguay's apology video is hot dog shit. Oh my god. Like, what the fuck was that nonsense? It's just, it sucked. I don't know if it's somehow better or worse than P. Diddy's recent fucking apology. Just, yeesh. As for Nick, yes, I'm aware. Holy shit, that rabbit hole is so deep you could fill it with all the gold in the world and it still wouldn't be filled. I've seen clips of the Bertram cartoon and it looks like hot garbage. But as for the show itself, no I haven't. And as for the Garfield movie, no I haven't seen it yet. It looks interesting though. Gildjian asks, Favorite ice type Pokemon? Did you see Steve Shine's Video Games Should Be Easy video? And are you aware that the investor Tim Ballard of Sound and Freedom was arrested for child kidnapping? Okay, let's go down this list. Favorite ice type Pokemon? Probably Frostlass. Steve Shy's video? Yep, I've seen it, and it's pretty fucking bad. And, uh, Tim Ballad. Uh, I fucking hate everything. What the fuck, Tim Ballad? What is wrong with you? Zansprinus asks, Why Akira didn't do a Team 4 star deal with Piccolo, Nail, and Kami Fusion? Why Future Trunks' timeline DBZ didn't change when 18 and 17 were stronger and 16 was a part of the group? Where was 16 in the original DB and who was his mother? Was the Red Ribbon Army a joke? And what was Akira's view of Andari's characters falling in love with adults? Alright, let's go down the list. Why didn't Akira do a Team 4 star did? Probably because he viewed Nail and Kami as kind of useless after the merger, so he just didn't see a need to do it. As for why it didn't change, multiverse theory. Basically split the timeline. Where 16 the original Dragon Ball? Probably just a random soldier that Goku probably killed. As for his mother, it was Volmi, I believe, which was the original Android 21, before being made into 21. Was the army a joke? Eh, not really. Later editions would be, but the original, not really. And as for Akita's views, probably that it was fucking cringe. And the final comment comes from the sleepy commentator. Have you seen Doodle Tones is finally doing the right thing video? Yes, I have. I actually made a statement regarding it, so I'm going to read it. Doodle had ample time to come forward about the whole FCK situation and about Toasty's actions and didn't until the damage was too deep for it to be fully treated when it came to the victims. As for the Laka calls, I am not a fan of how Doodle handled the first one from what I did see of it that wasn't consumed by Akumu's running commentary that is somehow more insufferable than mine and that is saying a lot. Sad that his video is the only way to access the call at the moment, but whatever. I do hope that she will get the help she needs going forward by taking this break slash goodbye from her platforms that can change for the better. As for the victims, I do wish them well and I do hope they are getting the help they need from what that monster toasty did to them all those years ago. Needless to say, I'm not a fan of how Doodle Tones has handled this situation, and I do hope the break will help her moving forward, and I do sincerely hope that the victims are okay and are getting the help they need. Because what Toasty did is absolutely fucking wretched. It's gross, and I hate it. So, with all that said, that concludes this edition of Ask a Groom. Next time will be episode 30, and my partner Susan Sakura Snow Fox returns, so if you have questions for one or both of us, feel free to ask them in the comments below. I'd love to read them. Until then, that's all for this edition, so thank you all for watching, and take care.